<laughs> so let me start by asking you my first and my favorite question of all time what according to you is the definition of health and fitness um i would say so health and fitness is very much based around taking ownership of your body mm. and this is very important for me as a practitioner that i teach my patients to take ownership of their health their well-being um, their movement their longevity and that they have to be a a advocate for themselves they have to be an active participant in their healing process which yeah. is really important um, and in fact in my practice I have patients sign something that says I will be an active participant in my <laughs> healing process so that it's it's not reliant on the physician to heal them per se but people take ownership of their health you mentioned such a beautiful term movement longevity what does that actually mean and how can people achieve it so movement longevity so two things so movement longevity literally if you just put the words together is that people want to move well for a very long time right that we want to move well when we're in our 80s 90s hundreds that we can still do the activities that we love to do that's the first part second yeah. part is that i truly believe that movement is a critical part of longevity so if you want to live into your 80s 90s and hundreds you have to move and movement has to be part of your formula your longevity formula is that you have to keep moving yeah that's that's so important i think in just um getting a busy lifestyle in just working and focusing on work we forget what movement longevity means and we're uh, using that as, uh, using movement and gym and just working out as a chore and not as a part of our daily routine or as a part of our own health and fitness. I think we're somewhere we're just losing or we're ignoring our own health. What do you think about, um, you know, that aspect? Yeah, so I'm I'm a big advocate on quality movement or quality quality and everything that we do versus quantity. It's kind of like uh, my daughter's in gymnastics, and so her coach will be like, "Okay, when you're practicing the skill, you want to practice perfect, right? Like perfect practice makes perfect performance, right? right. Versus you don't want to like." half do something and kind of slop through things mm -hmm. similar on that that the way that we sit the way that we stand decisions on how we move be very calculated in what you do yes. and try to make small changes so that this becomes more of a lifestyle so movement longevity and essentially what you're saying is prioritizing movement prioritizing health is a lifestyle and it requires choices that we make every day decisions to go to bed on time what is your sleep quality not just your sleep quantity so i try to bring that into everything that for myself but then that i recommend to my patients yeah that was going to be my next question how do you personally approach health and fitness yes so i i mean movement is part of part of my health and wellness and fitness and my longevity recipes movement um is part of my therapy is all also <laughs> this is how i find happiness and joy is in moving my body so it's very important to me mm -hmm. so what i i always practice what i preach is what you could yeah. say on that side so movement very very important other aspects is that I try to be very, very regimented on my sleep. I take sleep so seriously. And oftentimes people will say like, Emily, how do you have more than 24 hours in a day? They just think yeah. that I'm constantly doing things and I have a super busy schedule. <laughs> and the one thing that I do say is that of my entire day, the one thing that I'm most protective over is my sleep. Because the moment I wake up, I am, like running at it and I'm like boom 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 and I have to have my brain and my body at its peak performance to be able to run the companies that I do so mm -hmm. I'm just very protective on what I do mm -hmm. I still have fun so kind of bend the rules a little bit um, 
But for the most part, I try to be very smart, especially now that I'm in my 40s. Mm. I, I need to look at health and wellness differently than in my 30s even. You know, you don't look a day young. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> It just, you know, just come to New York. We'll go clubbing. I, we'll do all the Girl, I'm, I, yes, I will look you up. <laughs> I, can, I can see, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have the next whole day, like a Sunday, just for our sleep. So we'll focus on yes. sleep. Yes. But then the Saturday night is going to be yes. wild. <laughs> count it. Count, count me in. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, that brings me, you mentioned about your company and I know that is your baby. That's your love in your life. Uh, tell me a little bit more about Naboso and what that means to you. Absolutely. So Naboso is a sensory product line of products so that I can show people. Yeah. So all of the products feature this texture and this is a patented texture on all of our products and the purpose of the texture on our products is to stimulate the nerves in the palm of the hand and the bottom of the feet and by stimulating those nerves you are increasing awareness perception of your feet sense of your feet your posture your movement it's a great form of recovery and then it's also really important for strength so the focus of the products is really foot awareness, foot strength, foot recovery. And that texture that I showed you is on the inside of socks. It's on insoles, release tools. We have training mats. We have toe spacers, which kind of fall under the foot health. But the full product line is trying to help people prioritize their foot health to make to really bring in the feet into this movement longevity story, right? Mm -hmm. So part of how we move well starts with our base, our feet, how we relate to the ground. And the Naboso products are a way that I am trying to make that easier for people mm -hmm. or more fun. Is, is, is it only limited to feet and hands? Because I see that the texture is so unique. And like you said, it's patented. Why would, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is my question personally. Can we introduce it to coma patients or paralysis or flaccid patients? So uh, the Nobosa products have this very powerful application in neuro rehab. Right. And that, that was not the original intent when I developed them. I was thinking more fitness, performance, kind of the athletic side. Yeah. And then we started to see this benefit in MS. Parkinson's, stroke, neuropathy, and people in that category were saying, I haven't felt my feet in 10 years. I wear your socks, your insoles, and I can feel my feet again, which means I can walk confidently. And we have these really powerful effects. Also, we have seen people in the spinal cord injury, and this one fascinates me the most, that people who are in wheelchairs, so they have a, a lower spinal cord injury they're in a wheelchair and they will still put the naboso texture under their feet and they'll be assisted if they're trying to stand up and things like that but they'll still utilize the naboso products even though they have a spinal cord injury and it's amazing the response that that the patients say um really really inspiring and, and motivating so it's primarily hands and feet mm -hmm. We do have a neuro stick. I don't have one with me, but it's a similar similar texture because everything has the same texture. Mm -hmm. But it's on a massage stick, so you could massage all of the skin. Yeah. The intent behind that product when we developed it is that I wanted a therapist mm -hmm. who was working with someone who did have, let's say, a spinal cord injury or a stroke, that you could use the stick on their skin and essentially help them to feel their back, feel their arm, feel whatever part of the body you're trying to connect to. Right. And then of course it's for athletics and other things as well, but there's definitely a neural rehab application to our products. Yeah, it, it's such a beautiful way to stimulate or activate the, uh, like you said, the sensory nervous system, which I think is the most difficult because it's, uh, and we deal with muscles being physical therapy, being a physical therapist, like muscle activation is still a little 
uh, faster than the sensory, um, you know, uh, stimulation. So I feel that it's such a beautiful innovation and what you're doing. Yeah. You can you can already hear the response from the patients, and you never even thought that it could uh, grow this vast, and it's growing so beautifully. So that's wonderful. I'm so thank happy. you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we have a a hand product that we're launching, which is really exciting because a lot of people think of me and Nabosa within the foot space, mm -hmm. but the the need for hand occupational therapy and hand rehab strokes things like that is is huge so i'm excited to have our first um hand recovery or hand activation tool that we're launching yeah why did you think of starting or launching uh Nervoso? how did that idea come to you so i've been i've been practicing podiatry for the last decade mm -hmm. And an important part of how I've always practiced podiatry is functional, very in integrated. Um, actually, when I was going through my training, I left residency, my surgical training, and I went back to school and got my master's in human movement. Yeah. And when I did that, I focused on barefoot science and really saw this opportunity to build an awareness of feet from a sensory perspective. So I founded my education company. So that's another business that I have is I have an education company. And starting in 2012, I actually started traveling around the world for five years. I was all around the world, rarely in the United States. And I was teaching all these other professionals about feet, foot function, the sensory side, fascia, just really how I look at feet and movement. And part of that exploration, that development of that content, researching it, I started coming across textured insole research. And there's actually dozens of textured insole research that is out there and published and demonstrates efficacy, but then no one did anything with it. And I was like, why would you keep researching how powerful texture is if no one is going to make a product uh -huh. for a patient or to help people like why why are we doing the research if it's not going towards something that's going to be developed right. so i essentially took that research and then you know there's a bit of r d in there but then i started developing and working with texture mm -hmm. and it was really my goal to make this commercially available product that is based off of that really powerful research and then I've actually learned a lot about texture and surface science and all of this in the process um, that I think what I've learned through the development of Naboso has actually advanced that research even further, right. which, is, which is really, really exciting. Um, so yeah, that's how, I, that's how I came into it. And now here I am five years later and yeah. it's a behemoth that I did not know <laughs> it would be. Yeah. Did you have to go through like a lot of uh, textures because I know you have a patented texture right now for all of your products, but did you have to uh, go through a lot of research and a lot of textures and why did you finalize this texture? What's the science behind it? Yeah, so a lot of the research that was done, the researchers would actually use random arbitrary textures like uh, like sandpaper or just random things that they would try to make a quote unquote textured insole. And that's where some of the research is inconsistent in the results because they weren't really using the correct texture. Mm -hmm. There is then this one researcher, she's a podiatrist out of Australia, and her name is Hatton, H A T T O N. She's one of the leaders in textured research. And she did a study that looked at a pyramid pattern versus a circular pattern and he mm -hmm. said studied and said well which one stimulates the nervous system more oh, okay it's a pyramid so we have we have a pyramid right then by going through that and saying okay it's a pyramidal pattern now what is the distance that the nerve stimulates we happen to stimulate a nerve called the sa1 Merkel disc <laughs> it's yeah. a very specific nerve on the hands and the feet and it has what's called a spatial acuity of a millimeter. Mm -hmm. So the pyramids cannot be closer than a, pier, uh, closer than a millimeter 
but they also can't be too far. Otherwise, your brain is obviously not sensing that differentiation of the texture. Right. So that's a little bit based off of understanding mechanoception. Then the other part of it, honestly, was through the last five years, we listen to our customers. We, we want them to understand how it works. Do they want more stimulation? We actually started using silicone, so these other materials that will hold the pyramid. It'll actually make the pyramid a little, quote unquote, sharper or more stimulating, which people respond to better. So it's, it's a little bit of a trial and error. Our initial insoles that we launched, we actually don't make anymore because they weren't stimulating enough. They actually had more the circular texture than the pyramid. And the reason is that when we first launched them, I was like, I'm selling a product to consumers that are going to put it in their shoe and walk around this all day. If I hurt them, right? right? Like if they get a cut, what if that cut gets infected? Like I, yeah. that's like a big thing. I was like, I need to be able to sleep at night. Yeah knowing I'm not hurting someone. I'm, my intent is obviously to help people. So we started very cautiously in the set and in, in the launch of the insoles and then gauged feedback. Okay, people are not getting blisters. We're not getting abrasions, nothing's right. And then we were able to kind of push into the texture a little bit more. Right. So now our stimulus is much higher than our initial ones. And even on our mats, the mats were softer. Now they're a little bit harder, so they're more stimulating. So sometimes I see people who have our first mats because they used to have these sayings on the top that were like, go for it, like get your dreams. Like, you know, like there were motivational things that I put on the top of them. And I'll see them on Instagram and I'm like, oh my gosh, please replace your mat. It is not, <laughs> it is not stimulating enough the way that Naboso is like, Please, I will give you a map yeah. for free. <laughs> <laughs> I think while I was researching and trying to find a good logo, I, I really researched your brand a lot. And I did find a few of those mats. I found it so interesting. And I could see the how you started even on Instagram. <laughs> and it was just such raw pictures of a few clients, a few. <laughs> and then it grew it became so much professional in demand and you could I could see the whole growth so it makes me so happy just to Thank see the you. whole uh, growth in, in the bus. so where do you think this is heading and what are next on on your plans for Naboso? yes so we have additional products coming out I think an important part of Naboso and really the future of texture mm -hmm is that we continuously demonstrate the utility of texture. Right. Like what, what else could we put it on? How else could we use this texture to help an athlete, fitness, Pilates, neuro rehab, wellness, <laughs> longevity, right? So what, what type of products can we develop? And that's one of my favorite parts. I love the innovation side of Naboso. Yeah. So that's that's one thing that's important is that we will continuously evolve and develop. We're actually working on kind of playing with the toe spacers and we're we're making them even better, let's say, so yeah. that we can 100% stand behind our products and know that people feel confident behind them. So that's one thing. Um, we are bringing on a investor so that will actually really help Naboso scale to the next level, yeah. kind of get deeper into the market, um, have more market share, have more market awareness. And then I would say the other part is just really starting to lay the foundation of not, I guess you could say like the legacy on it. Cause it, I'm, I'm, I can't be with, with Naboso forever. Right. So I want it to grow so that when it gets to a place where there's a good consistent growth and momentum and maybe I step away yeah. that there is still that strength. So it's my goal to have texture be this known, accepted, well demonstrated and researched stimulus to the foot, kind of like vibration. Um, that's probably the best analogy that I would give. So there's whole body vibration platforms or vibration rollers. 
people know that vibration is a sensory stimulus for our muscles, for our nervous system, for our hands, for our feet. And texture is actually a very similar stimulus in that space. So it's actually mechanoception. So vibration is a mechanoceptive stimulus. So is texture. And I would like that to essentially be just this known, well accepted. So then I can go on to another adventure. <laughs> I can definitely see you, you know, uh, scaling this out. This, this has been on my mind. This has been really bugging me. Why the name Naboso? How did the name Naboso came in being? Yes, so Naboso is a Czech word, or it's a, a Slavic word, because it's also Polish. Okay. Um, but it is, when I chose it, it was intentfully to be a Czech word that means barefoot. And part of why I'm drawn to this word is, one, it means barefoot, and everything that I do is very focused around barefoot. Um, but one of my um, mentors and role models when I was starting my career, his name is Dr. Yanda, Dr. Vladimir Yanda. And he is the one who started short foot. Short foot is one of my favorite exercises. Most people know me for short foot. I always talk about short foot when I do anything educational. Um, and so he was a Czech physiatrist. So this is kind of my homage to him to say, okay, I chose a Czech word, yeah. means barefoot, just kind of to really hone on to that that Czech origin of really my work and a lot of the work in this foot space. Mm -hmm. Do you have to do like a lot of, do you personally have to do a lot of research when it comes to, uh, designing your products or launching them, the market uh, response, the feedback? Yes, and a little bit more so in the beginning, yes. just because it was trying to figure out the specificity of the texture, as I had said, so that's very important, and then the tool. Yes. So how, how are you going to make that texture that you want to stay on the ball or to stay on the stick, right? Like, what type of tool? Is it like a waffle iron? And, right, there's different ways that materials are made. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting when we, when we started doing this is that because they're these tiny little pyramids, right. our mats were injection molded, which means you have to push the material into something with really, really high pressure mm -hmm. to try to get the material into the itty bitty pyramids of hundreds of them on this one sheet of material. Yeah. And then when you do that, you have to very slowly take it out of the waffle iron, kind of imagine that, right, that you're pulling it out. And if you do it too quickly and you create a defect in one of the triangles, the whole thing or like that area can't be used because I can't sell a product with like one triangle that has a defect in it, right? So that part is a little, little bit of the fun part. Um, and then I would say the next proudest one that we came up with is our socks. And our, I absolutely love our socks. The listeners should try our socks. But they have the texture on the inside of the sock. And it took two years to figure out the manufacturing process to get the texture to essentially stay effectively in the sock and that you could wash it, you could dry it, you could use it, and it doesn't get damaged. So... That was that was another big one, and we did that during COVID, which was really hard, wow. <laughs> just because we couldn't go to the factory. So that was that's one of the proudest. And then we just got a patent around the sock, so I'm very excited. We have four four granted patents, another eight that are pending. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Like I'm so excited just to you know hear all of this, and I cannot wait to see um, more from Neboso. Uh, you know, yeah, definitely. I love these ideas. Um, it's so inspiring. You started from nothing and then just one texture can change the whole circuits in your brain. So magical. And you made that happen. You saw that there is nothing in the market and then you just dived into it. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love it. We have some really great 
partnerships that are really embracing the benefit of the texture where we have a partnership with Vivo Barefoot Shoes. Zero Shoes is another partnership. Um, Stretch Labs, which are all across the United States. Yes. We have a partnership with them. So they're actually incorporating our products into their facilities and selling them. So that's exciting. We have a couple other ones that have license agreements. So it's it's really good to see that other people are embracing this, this idea yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh what would one last piece of advice be to everyone who's listening out there? Uh, what I would say, kind of related to the goal of Naboso, is my tip as a podiatrist to people to start to prioritize their foot health is to release their feet every day. Mm -hmm. And we have a product, I don't have it with me, but it's called a neural ball. Yeah. And it's a ball that splits into two domes and it has our texture on it. And I recommend that people release their feet every morning, every evening when they brush their mm -hmm. teeth. Now, if you don't have a neural ball, totally fine. You can still do this. You could have a lacrosse ball or a golf ball, whatever it is. Yeah. Leave it in front of your bathroom sink and then Every single time you brush your teeth, either stand on it, roll something to get a little bit of a, a tail C or a reset to your feet. Mm -hmm. We have 26 muscles in the bottom of our feet, and they play a very important role in how we balance, stabilize, hold our posture. Mm -hmm. so they need to be they need to be loved. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely. I did receive a neuro ball from the book. Uh, Gabe was so Gabby, Gabby was so kind enough to send the product. Uh, first, the product was like a return. There was some shipment issues, but <laughs> she made sure that, that I got it again. And I have a few, I have a few videos coming up. Oh, good. I, yeah, I just took that uh, bulk today. That's why I don't have it. And I was like, what are the chances? I just took it today to the office, to, to the clinic, and I was showing my patients around that. And we were just playing around and seeing how we're going to make a few videos with it. So, uh, yes, we do have a few videos coming with the Neuro Ball, which is an amazing product. And thank you so much to Gabby and yourself to send that ball. And it was a very sweet gesture. So thank you so much. Of course. You're so welcome. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope you have a lovely dinner. Uh, and I wish we do it more. And I'm going to have you come on live again sometime soon Absolutely. this was really awesome thank you so much of course thank you so much have a wonderful day you too okay. bye bye, bye. bye. <laughs>